and welcome back fellow adventurers to Let's Play Kentucky Route Zero. Uh, first off, I'd just like to quickly say thank you for everyone who's been leaving comments saying welcome back. <laughs> um, it's good to know that y'all are still out there and uh, are so far enjoying this Let's Play. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that, uh, yeah, that, that you continue to enjoy it. And it is good to be back in the Let's Play chair, I must say. Okay. So when we left off, we were at the Elkhorn Mine, and we had just turned the uh, turntable here. So I guess it's time to go down these alternate tracks and see what we can find. And I think I'm going to go ahead and turn off the light again, and that way we can see the kind of the neat little ghost effects as we go along. <laughs> I didn't know that those were still down here. You've been down here before? Not this deep, but I knew about the tape machines. Tape machines? Hmm. I don't see any... Oh, wait a minute. Down there. Maybe that's what she's referring to. When this mine was active, a couple of folk music archivists spent time here recording minor songs really academic ivory tower types. None of the miners really talked to them much. So they stayed at the margins, observed, took notes, and then sometimes they'd get someone on a lunch break to sing into their microphone. Then I guess the power company got some kind of interest in the project and gave the archivists some coal script tokens to pay the miners uh, with for their songs. What happened to the archivists? They got out. When the flood came, they left. Ah, yes. Okay, that's what that is. Let's have a look. Tape player. A dusty reel-to-reel -reel tape player is stashed beneath the track. Loaded with tape, but starved for power. Oh, it's the end of the line. Oh, that sounded horrific. <laughs> um, either that was some kind of supernatural thing, or somehow cutting the power to our train, uh, to the light anyway, supplied this thing with power so it actually started moving. But as you kind of heard, not only is it distorted, but it sounds like it was playing at really low speed, too. So I, I could not make out what in the world song they were trying to sing there. Of course, if I actually heard that in the middle of a mine with all the lights off, I would probably completely lose my, uh, lose my mind. As scary as anything. Well, that's a dead end, so we'll just keep, we'll head back here to the turntable. That's the whole canary in the coal mine kind of thing. Ah, we can go past the turntable. Alright. So let's 
head the other way. Oh, I guess we turn the lights off again. See if we see anything. Space over here. Oh, saw a few silhouettes there. This is the end of the line in this direction. Storage. Damn. It's almost totally intact. I thought it would have been destroyed. What is this place? It's a recording studio, basically. Kind of thrown together, but. This is where the archivists would record, and I guess then they'd sequester themselves down by that tape deck we found to listen to the recorded songs. What do you think the archivists were after? Data, I guess. Comparing intonation, subject matter, diction. You know, all those little details that no one really thinks about when they listen to music. Yeah, academics are great at that stuff. Let's get out of here. Okay. You can see the microphones up there and everything. From the way they're sitting, it looks like Shannon is steering. She's got her hand, I think, on a control or something. Which would make sense. She knows far more about this mine than the Conway does. So we'll head back to the turntable, see if it has any other settings besides the uh, original one. Shannon connects two clip leads from her signal generator to the turntable's electrical panel. We're on the track between the pendulum and the casket, so... Um... I think we were, uh, we were on one of these originally, I think. So I guess there's three different settings. Um, is... Now I can't, can't remember which one we're at. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> Just do the top one. The animal, bones, and the rowboat. Actually, that looks like the one we were originally at, so let's try the other one, because I think originally this boat was directly behind us. So, let's see, the bat feeder and the scarecrow. I see the scarecrow, so does that mean this thing up here is the bat feeder, maybe? Hmm. Well, in any case, let's find out what's over this direction. Oh, that was pretty short. Oh, because the track is broken. The tracks are all messed up here. This tram isn't going any further. I wonder what da what's down that tunnel. Mm, doesn't look like we can find out. Well, back the other way. silhouettes, I think, I see. Going downhill again. Oh, what do we have here? 
an underground road. You can see there's the center line, there's the guardrail. Um, doesn't look like it's been maintained very well because there's a large chunk of the wall and ceiling missing. Another dead end. Probably for the best, otherwise we would just plummet onto the road. Do you hear that? Kind of a muffled rumbling? Eh, we wouldn't be near the surface, we just went downhill. Maybe we're near water? Could be. There was an underground lake around here years ago. I guess that's why they stopped digging so abruptly here. <laughs> so yeah, neither our characters don't see what we can see, so they don't know there's actually a, a road here. So either the miners were really lucky, or someone told them or knew that this, this underground road was here. Keep that in mind. We'll be dealing with that later. Alright, I think that's everywhere that we can go down here on the track. So we'll go back to the... Uh, I guess we'll come back with the light on. That's what we're usually doing. Come back here. Turntable. And we'll head out of the mine area. So, Bones and Rowboat. Ah, yeah, you can see there's the animal bones down there. Alright, let's go. I think we went this way in the dark already, so we'll just have the light on this time. Some side passages here. like the exit. Thank God. Okay. So you, you have a chance to uh, uh, <laughs> not leave in case you want to look around, but we already have, so I think we're good. Let's go. Yeah, okay. I just... that tunnel where the tracks were broken. I'd like to take a look down there. <laughs> and both of these are the same thing. It's just, who do you want to talk? Uh, we'll just have Conway say it. Do whatever you need. I'll just wait for you here. Thanks. I'll be right back. What is so important down there that she needs to see? Oh, we can look at the birdcage now. A paper tag hangs from the birdcage by a string. Canary, 25 tokens. Oh man. You mean they had to pay to get a, a canary down here to test to see if the air was good? That's just brutal. Canary sold at the company store? Did they also sell respirators? No bones in the cage. The bird must have been set free. Or maybe the cage was cleaned. There are cardinals at the Louisville Zoo and other birds. Ostriches, eagles, emus, no canaries. Too common? Too small, maybe? But they have starlings. Starlings aren't much bigger than canaries. Um, ah, tape reels. A pile of tape reels is jammed into the top of the tram. They must have been thrown down in a rush. The reels are unlabeled. The tape is decayed. Lisette and, Lisette and Ira's son, Charlie, talked about a piece of music you liked made with old decaying tapes. What was it called? Something about... Charlie had the most bizarre taste in music. Weird, noisy computer music. Where did he even hear that stuff? Louisville, probably. Or college. He was a smart kid. Damn pity. 
Oh. Sounds like something bad happened to Charlie. I like how, we, as we were, as uh, Conway's waiting for her, he's just musing on what he's seeing. Oh, oh, I missed it. Oh, uh, I'd forgot. I don't even remember that I knew that it was ever timed. Sorry about that, folks. I apologize. Hey, folks. Uh, I put this cut in here just because I felt bad about missing the notebook, <laughs> so I went back to look at it. Um, in a previous save game. So here we are. The notebook at the top of this dusty stack is labeled in black marker. The label is dusty and smudged, but it looks like it might say horses. Houses, maybe? Or verses, even? Crude and hurried handwriting, too. The set has immaculate handwriting, pristine and measured cursive, never a stray mark. For the last several months, she filled out the recipes for each order, since that young couple complained about the handwriting on the order slip. It's carbon paper, anyway. It's bound to wear away over time. If they're so precise about their records, they should put it on a computer anyway. like he's uh, not in the best of shape. Kind of shambles everywhere. The crap shank... Cr yeah, let me try that again. The cramped shack is lined with wooden shelves. Dusty stacks of tape reels and notebooks crowd the room, but a bit of moonlight filters through a window near the ceiling. On a small desk in the middle of the room lay three notebooks. The red one is labeled J. Marquez, the green one is labeled R. Marquez, and the blue one is unlabeled. Um, okay. I guess we could just go in order. Conray opens the red notebook. The pages are covered in disorganized notes, some written horizontally and others scribbled vertically into margins. A few pages are lined more evenly and divided up into charts, correlating seasons, lyrics, harmonies, and chords. Huh. Not necessarily correlated with each other. Although maybe to the person writing it they did. See the green notebook? On each page is delicately rendered charcoal drawing. Most are portraits of rugged faces. Near the middle of the book, there are a few drawings of a young girl in a miner's helmet. She plays along the minecart tracks, collecting pieces of wire. In one drawing, another girl sits nearby, intently studying a book. I wonder if one of those might be Shannon, as a little kid. Conway opens the blue notebook. Notebook is full of Greek letters and cryptic mathematical formulas. Near the back of the book, what first looks like it might be... Oh yeah, this place. Shannon has showed up while Carl was, uh, while Conway was reading. These notebooks are labeled Marquez. Your parents are the archivists? No, Weaver's parents are the archivists. My parents were miners. How's the leg? Hmm. I can walk on it, but it's slow. Well, I'll try not to get too far ahead of you. You don't mind hitching a ride, do you? Oh, sorry. You don't mind my hitching a ride, do you? I kind of got a lift uh, uh, out of here and wasn't sure if uh, when I'd be heading back. I can drive. Eh, it's Conway's truck, so he'd probably say I can handle it. Okay, your decision. Hmm. Is he really interested in finding the zero or trying to find another route? 
Maybe he might be interested in alternatives. I guess I should look for another route to Dogwood Drive. Yeah, all right. Well, maybe asking Weaver about the Zero was the wrong place to start. Maybe you should just ask her for specific directions. Her answers are complicated enough without a layer of indirection at the question. I saw a Weaver at my workshop. That's up north by Lake Nolan. Right at Wax and Peonia. In the back of, the, of a bait shop. Pretty glamorous, right? These are the times we live in. She's either up there or back at the farmhouse. Whichever you want to head to first, just let me know. suddenly teleports over to the truck. Lisette's Antiques. I guess this is your truck? Surprised. It's kind of old. No, I'm not surprised. I guess it's, I guess it's an antique, too. I think it suits you. <laughs> I'm not sure how to respond to that. How's blue looking? Same description as always. This is Shannon. Nice to meet you, Blue. Oops, clicked the wrong one. <laughs> I guess she said I never had a dog. My folks worked alternating shifts for a while. No time to care for a dog. We can still wander around. Oh, I'll just go over here and make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, Conway was definitely a little bit more sprightly early on in the game. Now, not quite so much. as we can go in this direction. No. I think that's it. Alright. Well, then drive we shall. <laughs> Are you sure you want to go? Yes. Conway heads back into the So, let's click on our directions here. Uh, still don't have notes. Alright, we have directions between, yeah, the farm and the mines. Um, but we don't seem to have directions for that bait shop that she was talking about. Could just wander around, after all. Um, I know, uh, I believe there are some places over here that you can visit that are not necessarily having to do with the game, pro progressing the main story of the game. So, let's see. You know, there are boundaries, you can see here at the double lines, where we can't go any further. So it's not like you can drive all over Kentucky. I do like the fact that the um, soundscape changes when you get onto the interstate. It's obviously more crowded. Can't get on that road. Can go along this road. That's Wax Road, by the way, which is one of the... Pl uh, things she told us to watch out for. So our actual destination is probably somewhere over there. But again, just because this is an adventure game, it's just, oops, 
Let's make our way around here and just see if we run into anything interesting. Huh. Okay, here's some airplane. Two shirtless, chewless men push a light aircraft along the highway. Occasionally, one or the other slips a bit on the sweating asphalt, or stops to pull back his hair. The rubber is almost worn away. Soon these men will be dragging this airplane. The men are nearly broken. That's depressing. They almost look like they're sleepwalking. There's definitely a strong melancholy vibe throughout this whole game, and this scene actually <laughs> encapsulates the feeling pretty well, I'd say. I think that's it. You can't walk anywhere. I guess they'll just take it off screen. Yep. Well, whatever you guys are doing, I wish you well. Well, back on the road, I guess. So, I think it's over here. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, there it is. That's the bait shop. Okay. So, we know where we can go to progress the story. Oops. I think this one just dead ends. Yeah. Okay. And Sharon said that we could also go back to the farmhouse. So, yeah, we, might, we might go to the farmhouse first, I think. After we're done kind of wandering around. Ooh, there's a church here. A singing chorus echoes from within the church. The building is one story tall with a pitched roof and a three story spire rising from the front. The top section of the spire is made of stained glass. An interior light illuminates the pines in red, green, and blue. A large LED display glows in the parking lot. Light of the Last Great Awakening Baptist Church. Um, sure. We'll go in. Conway approaches the church doors. The front doors of the church are modest and warm. They are locked. Um, that's unusual for a church. Uh, walk around to the rear of the building. A ramp leads up from a few dusty metal trash cans to the church's back door. stuck to the bottom of it. Another is full of unlabeled videotapes. That's bizarre. Um, okay, I guess we can't follow up on the videotapes. Although, to be fair, it's not like we have a VCR in our back pocket or something. Um, enter the church's back door. He finds himself in a kitchen lit by a buzzing fluorescent ceiling fixture. On the counter are a plate of moldy bread and an empty Dixie cup flecked red around its waxy rim. A set of swinging plastic doors on the far wall lead out of the kitchen. Well, that looks like it's left over from communion. Walk through plastic doors. Vacant pews sprawl unevenly into the church. A small raised stage 
lies to Conway's right, there except for a tape recorder. The tape recorder's power cord runs to an outlet near Conla Conway's feet. Again, that's kind of eerie. Conway unplugs the tape recorder, the singing starts, stops, <laughs> the lights fail. So the, those two scenes there are pretty typical of what happens on these kinds of little side things that you travel to every now and, uh, and again. Some uh, are actual scenes that you can see for yourself, others are just described like a text adventure.